Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is an English summary, a gist and a translation of the Majlis of Hazrat Muraqa Muruzama Sahib Damad Barakatuhum, which took place on Friday, the 2nd of Safar, 1443, corresponding with the English date, 10th of September 2021. This Majlis took place after the Ishraq Salat at the residence, Baytul Azkar, of Hazrat Wala Damad Barakatuhum. Hazrat Wala starts off by quoting the ayat of Surah Al Qalam. Noon, Wal Qalami wa ma yasturun, ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon, wa inna laka la ajran ghayra mamnoon, wa inna ka la ala khuluqin azim, fa satubusiru wa yubusirun bi ayyikum ul maftoon. Hazrat Wala Damad Barakatuhum thereafter goes on to say that just like how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the Qur'an. He also blessed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the most exalted, flawless character, khuluq azim. Hazrat Shah Waliullah, Muhaddis Delvi rahimahullah ta'ala used to say that it is the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has blessed this insignificant ummati with the tawfiq and the hidayat to, to learn the Qur'an, recite the Qur'an and teach the Qur'an. The hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states that on the day of Qiyamah when the malaika, when the malak muqarrab, the close angel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Nabi mursal, the commissioned Anbiya alayhi musalatu wasalam, those that were sent, when their shafa'at becomes flawless, uh, sorry, when their shafa'at becomes, when they become helpless, meaning they would be granted a time and a period in which they would be able to intercede. But after that, the Qur'an would then stand and start making intercession or interceding on behalf of others. Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq and the hidayat of reciting the Qur'an, learning, teaching, understanding and pondering on the Qur'an. At least, the least we can do is to recite. This particular ayat or these ayat came to mind uh, today. Noon. Noon. Only Allah knows the correct meaning of this letter. It is from the huruf muqatta'at, the individually mentioned uh, Letters in the Quran, Noon, Wal Qalami wa Ma Yasturun, by the oath of the pen, the pen that recorded the destiny of the creation on the Loha Mahfuz, Wa Ma Yasturun, and by the oath of what they write, the angels that record the actions of people. So, the Allah Ta'ala starts off his kalam. His entire Quran, the Quran in Majid, is started off in this manner, Alif, Lam, Mim, with the huruf muqatta'at, to show insan that he must first acknowledge his ignorance. He must first stop his horse from running into the open fields and acknowledge and confess to this fact that I am ignorant. Ultimate knowledge belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First, negation. And then confirmation. First nafi and then ithbat. Hazrat Sayyid Suleiman Nadwi rahimahullah ta'ala, when he went to Hazrat Tanwi rahimahullah, people asked him, Hazrat, but you are allama. I mean, you went, what did you actually achieve? And he says so beautifully that I came to know about my ignorance. Apne ilm, apne jahal ka ilm ho gaya. I came to know about my ignorance. I also was understanding myself to be an Allama. Now, at nights, the evenings, the ulama from Dioban used to go to Tanabon in the khidmat of Hazrat Tanwi rahimahullah ta'ala. And one alim remarked, after all, what is it? There are libraries full of knowledge and books. Why is it and how is it that you people go there and what do you do and what do you achieve? Hazrat Mufti Saab said to Hazrat Tanwi and passed over this remark and comment to him. 
And then he addressed his audience and those who were in front of him by saying that tell me sincerely and truly when you come here, is there an increase in your knowledge or not? To which they all answered in the affirmative. And most definitely when you go to the Ahlullah, there will be an increase in your knowledge. That knowledge which comes directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he inspires their hearts. Hazrat Mawlana Qasim Saab used to say that I went to Haji Saab because of his knowledge. Al-ilm nurun. Ilm and knowledge is that nur which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pours and throws into the hearts of these pious and saintly people. Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq and hidayat of understanding this. So, man alima, man amila bima alima, warrathahu Allahu ilma ma lam ya'lam. The hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam states that a person who practices on the knowledge that he has, then Allah Ta'ala will give him such knowledge, the knowledge of that which he knew not before. Allah Ta'ala, whoever he wishes so, he grants, he grants them and he gives it to them. Hazrat Tanwi Rahimahullah, Hazrat Gangohi and also Hazrat Shah Muhibbullah Ilahabadi. These were great giants of knowledge. Yes, you know, Hazrat Shah Muhibbullah Ilahabadi is not so common and well known. Towards the end of his life, he started uh, listening to Qawwali etc. And uh, he is not so common uh, in the sense that we don't know so his name is not so common today as that of Hazrat Tanwi and Hazrat Gangohi. Mawlana Habibur Rahman Azmi used to say about him, about Hazrat Shah Muhibbullah, that this individual had such knowledge. If you look at his kitabs, we can't even understand what he's actually saying. So of what a high level and caliber. But all these people came and they bowed down and came to drink from the fountain of Hazrat Haji Imdadullah Rahimahullah. So this is Sahih Ilm, Hakiki Ilm, genuine knowledge. Allah Ta'ala also give us this type of knowledge. You know, today we say amongst ourselves that uh, don't look at him like that. Don't you know him? This is his salary. He earns so much. Uh, he may seem unassuming. But listen, he gets a big packet in the end of the month. This is his wages. So Allah Ta'ala is saying the same regarding Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We'll come to that part. Let me just uh, translate the ayat before that first. Ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon. By the grace of your Rabb, you are certainly not insane. O Rasul of Allah, as the Mushrikeen maliciously claim that you are insane, by the grace of your Rabb, you are certainly not insane. So Allah is making the statement to humanity that my Habib is not insane. Indeed, because of your tireless efforts to propagate the deen, you shall have a reward that will never come to an end, that never comes to an end. So do not be grieved with the taunts of the Mushrikeen. With the taunts of the Mushrikeen. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's ilm was perfect and complete. His aql, his mind, his intellect, his understanding was of the highest level that could ever be found. His faham, his understanding was that of the greatest. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made the dua to Allah. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-junoon wal-judham wa min sayyi al-asqam. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you against madness and leprosy and all types of evil sicknesses. Now this dua in itself is a proof of nubuwat and prophethood. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I mean in those days, there was just a few sicknesses. Maybe fever, this, that, the other. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made mention of them. It was common amongst the Sahaba. But as time went on, with the passage of time, we come to learn about so many new, different, different types of sicknesses. Cancer, blood pressure, this year, that there, whatever it is. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by saying, by saying that, Oh Allah, 
I seek refuge in you against all evil sicknesses. Wamin sayi il asqam. He covers everything from start to end. Like how we speak about the conveyances. And after that, the more general one comes that would completely overwhelm and count everything, every type of transport and conveyance that we find in this type of day and age. I mean, such sicknesses that even doctors, uh, professionals, professors find themselves to be helpless in diagnosing the sickness and in stipulating a cure for it. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam perfection in aqal, in, in, in the deen, in akhlaq, in the kitab, in every way. The reward of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَإِنَّ لَكَ لَأَجْرًا غَيْرَ مُمْنُونَ Indeed, you shall, you shall have a reward that never comes to an end. Meaning, any person who gets any type of hidayat in any way, in any part of the entire world, the reward of it actually and firstly goes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Your reward shall never come to an end. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advises Ali radiallahu ta'ala on his own son-in-law, his cousin, by saying to him that the deen is great, the green is supreme, the green, the deen is the ultimate. If even just one person gets some type of hidayat and understanding from you, it is better for, for you than this entire world and whatever it contains. I mean, the most expensive and uh, the greatest commodity in those days and age in, in the terms of wealth was that of red camels. You know, when we went uh, for the Sad Sala Jalsa to Darul Rum Diyoban, which take place uh, every hundred years, there's a Jalsa like this. I mean, Sad Sala actually means uh, once every century. So we went for this particular type of unique jalsa there to Darul Um Dioban. Thereafter, we made way, uh, our way to Jalalabad, where we went to meet Hazar Marasha uh, Masihullah Khasab. And when he was there, we were sitting in his majlis, he was standing. And with such a passion, he was saying that this ilm is no ordinary ilm. It's not something meager, small or insignificant. Do not suffer from an inferiority complex. This deen is the ultimate. This deen is the greatest. Thereafter, Hazrat Wala Damat Barakatum goes on to say that Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Don't understand it to be small. It is so unique. It is so great. It is so supreme. Maktab Ishq me jiski Bismillah ho. Awal qadam uska fana fillah ho. The person in the maktab, in the madrasa of Ishq and love of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, his start is with Bismillah. Then what? Then. His first step in this path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be ultimate and complete humility. A person being down to earth, annihilation of oneself, tawadu. We understand from this that a person has to be absolutely humble. It is only then when he would achieve and receive something. Hazar Haji Sab, his maslak and his... Uh, path was this of that, uh, I mean, of sabr. One occasion, a person came to him and all these great ulama and uh, giants of knowledge were in his majlis. And the person came to him in pain, holding tightly the different parts of his stomach, his sides, his body, saying that I am in so much of taklif. Hazrat, make dua for me. I am in so much of taklif in so much of pain. These ulama were sitting and they were thinking to themselves, what would Hazrat answer on this occasion? Because his thing is that of faqa, of poverty, of sabr, etc. What would he say here? He answered so beautifully and he says and makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Oh Allah, change your ni'mat of sickness 
for this particular person because he is weak and he cannot tolerate it. Exchange it for the ni'mat of good health. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. On one occasion, a person asked Hazrat Haji Sahib that Hazrat, I mean, are you always saying that poverty and you're giving preference to poverty over wealth and riches? But the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying the other way around. Meaning the hadith reads, Al yadul ulya khayrun min yadi sufla. That the higher hand is better than the lower hand. Meaning that the giving hand is better than the taking hand. The one who's, who's giving is better than the one who's taking. I mean the subtle indication is that there's actually fazilat here for the person who has wealth and riches as opposed to that one who is poor and doesn't have. He answers, Hazrat Haji Sahib Rahimahullah, he says that the person who is giving, even though it may just be 10 rupees, then he is going or leaning towards or inclined to poverty just because of 10 rupees. In simple words, what can we say? Understand it simply and blankly, he's 10 rupees poorer. Whereas the person, the beggar, who received that 10 rupees, the fact of the matter is, no matter how poor he is, the fact of the matter is, he's 10 rupees richer. So he's going, so, in essence, the person who is giving is going towards poverty, and the one who's receiving is going towards that of riches, and that's actually why the hadith states that the giving hand is better than the taking hand, meaning <coughs> he was trying to establish from this the fazilat of faqr and poverty over that of riches. Allahu Akbar. Wa innak, uh, let's continue. Wa innaka la ala khulukin azim. Verse number four of Surah Al Qalam. Verily, you are firmly stationed upon an exalted, flawless character. You are upon an exalted character, which no insane person can possess. No insane person can possess such a high level. I mean, a mad person, an insane person, he's mad, he's lost it, he's taking a bricks and throwing it at people, he's gone mad. Can a person who has flawless character do that? And look at the tartib, in what a beautiful and unique order Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relates and states all of these in the Quran. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's mind and his aql and his understanding was to the highest. Allah ta'ala says, you are certainly not insane by the grace of your Rabb, you are not insane. And then two ayats down, Allah ta'ala says, you are upon the, ex the exalted character. So the aql was complete and to perfection and the khuluq azim was of the highest as well. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was an embodiment of both of these. You know the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ittaqu firasat al-mu'min, fear the insight, the foresight of a believer. فَإِنَّهُ يَنْظُرُ بِنُورِ اللَّهِ For he sees what the strength of Allah, he sees what the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was a Yahudi, there was this person, this rabbi, I mean knowledgeable, or was it Nasrani? And one day he said, I want to go and find out what is and what is the reality of fear the insight of a believer. Nevertheless, he put on the clothes of the Sufis. He put, in, put on a, a, a big jubba and then he fastened his turban. He has the tasbih in the hand and he makes off for the majlis of the sheikh. And then he comes and he says that Hazrat, Sheikh, tell me what is the meaning of ittaqu firasat al-mu'min? And the Sheikh says to him that the meaning of that particular hadith is what you are hiding under these robes of yours. This false impression that you are giving, the chain and the salib and the cross and all those other things that you've got hanging around your neck, those chains, etc. That is the meaning of this particular hadith. And then he goes on to say, Hazrat, how can you say that about me? Immediately the sheikh said, get hold of him. 
get hold of him and open him up. Rip those clothes. And when that was done, and it was opened up, and it was made apparent to all the people of the Majlis there in the gathering, that this is exactly what this person done. He's asking this question, and what the Sheikh said is exactly what had occurred. He was hiding, and he was portraying, giving a false impression in his, of somebody else, and he's hiding something else. When this actually happened, he says the shahadat, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. I bear witness, I testify that there is none worthy of worship but one Allah, and Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the last and final messenger of Allah. So on one side, in this majlis, one person embraces Islam. Together with that, instantaneously, the moment is golden. The Sheikh looks at his audience and his majma and his majlis and he says to them, this person has accepted Islam. Now that's for him. He's come into the fold. But what about us? We need to enter Islam in a completely different and unique manner. Up till today we are Muslim. We are saying we are Muslim. But let us enter into Islam into a diff in a different manner so that we really truly become the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in essence, we are not good Muslims. We are not that sincere Muslim. We are not the true Muslim. When he said this, it had such an impression on those who were present in his majlis that all of them let loose that screeching sound. Allah! That they were so affected, it touched their hearts. And not only that, this is the calm, this is the work of our Buzurgan Deen, our Mashaykh and the Ahlullah. On one hand, the person is pledging at his hands and entering the fold of Islam. The non-Muslim priest and rabbi comes into the fold. And on the other hand, the Sheikh takes in a moment from one level to another level, from the earth to the skies, in the, in, in the sense of spirituality, he is muridin. He takes them just one story higher, one level higher, he takes them. Allahu Akbar. So, you cannot be majnoon, O oh my Habib. Indeed, you, sh you, by the grace of your Rabb, are certainly not insane. You shall have a reward that will ne never come to an end. An Arab alim writes that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had been given such a high level such a high level of exalted character that we cannot even understand. We cannot even understand it of what a high level Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was. A person was coming from the dis distance. The hadith reads, An Urwa ibn Zubayr radiyallahu ta'ala an. Urwa ibn Zubayr radiyallahu ta'ala an says, Hazrat Wala is quoting the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anna Aishata radiyallahu ta'ala anha akhbaratuhu that Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha informed him that annahu istadhana ala nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rajulun a person sought to come into the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faqala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is at a distance from him the permission is being sought on that end and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying on this end i'dhanu lahu give him permission but listen fabi'sa ibnul ashira aw bi'sa akhul ashira listen let him in but you know what the fact of the matter is he's the worst of the lot He's the worst man in that tribe or in society. When the individual comes in, Rasulullah is so soft, so kind, so pleasant with him. He entertains him. He sees to him. Nevertheless, the man finishes up. He leaves. Now, where could Hazrat Aisha tolerate? Immediately, she says, Fakultu. I said to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa Ya Rasulullah, Kulta ma kulta, you said what you said, thumma alanta lahu, alanta lahu fil qawl, and thereafter you were so nice to him, you were so good to him, you were so kind to him. Faqala, ay Aisha, 
Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O oh Aisha, inna sharran nas manzilatan indallah. The, the worst person in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, man tarakahu aw wada'ahu nas ittiqa'a fuhshi. The one who people abandon him, they leave him, they stay away from him only with one intention, he'll hurt us. Out of the fear of his evil, out of the ear, for the, the, the fear of his evil. So look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On one hand, he is fulfilling the haq, the haq of the essence. That listen Aisha, listen about this person. So you won't be harmed by him. Nabi Sassu put the reality forward on one side. And on the other side, when the man came, then what did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? He came forward with the best of character. Now said, can such a person be mad or insane as the mushrikeen claimed? So do not be grieved, O Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hazrat Morana Muhammad Ahmad Partabgari Rahimahullah Ta'ala speaks about an incident where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who had a person as a visitor. Nevertheless, that particular door for some reason or the other got locked due to which the person could not relieve himself and he relieved himself inside. Nevertheless, when this door got opened, the person eventually ran away. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came and he realized what had happened, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his own blessed hands started washing that bedding on which was the stool of this particular visitor. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is washing that and the sahaba came and they said to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Oh Nabi of Allah, what are you doing? Even we can do that. Eventually they start persisting. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to them that listen, the visitor is mine. If you're really persisting, listen, throw the water, but I'll clean the mess. This was the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam towards that person who even messed in his home or in the place where that person was housed. Look at the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his compassion to that of a sinner. The lady has committed a crime due to which she had to be stoned to death. In, fa in fact, she persisted this way and that way. She acknowledged, she came forward. And even though Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not want to, eventually she was pelted. She was pelted. Now, our Hazrat, Wala Damar Barakatun, is saying that Hazrat Mawla Shah Wasiullah Sahib's mizaj in the end was like this of such type of shafqat towards a sinner, towards a sinner. Nevertheless, after she had been pelted and she passes away, Umar radiallahu ta'ala passes some type of re remark that uh, she passed away, uh, the passing away of a, a dog, meaning in a, in a most insignificant way, in a most disgraceful way. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam immediately, immediately shows compassion to this lady who committed the sin and rectifies Umar by saying to him, Umar, hold your tongue. Omar, hold your tongue. If her Toba were to be distributed amongst all the people of Medina, it would be sufficient for the whole lot of them. Allahu Akbar. This was the exalted character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, on one occasion, I, I mentioned the incident to you people that some type of difficulty and calamity came upon me. Weapons were taken out, etc. In that majlis, I spoke about the grand character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You are firmly stationed upon an exalted, flawless character. Allahu Akbar. I then said to them, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. Thereafter, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam confirms and he says, Bu'ithtu li utammima makarim al-akhlaq. I have been commissioned expressly, solely, so that I could bring to perfection akhlaq and character. Al-hubbu asasi. My foundation is built upon love. 
My foundation is built upon love. My foundation is love. I said to them that I have come from Ilahabad. My niyat is that of deen. I've only come here for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I gave that particular majlis and sermon due to which it reduced the audience to tears. It was after that that the people of Gujarat started uh, uh, having more type of aqidat and faith in me. And that was in one of my first suffers and travels to Gujarat. You know, Hazrat Wala there after quotes and he says, you know, the philosophers, they remark and they talk so much on the topic of ilahiyat. Ilahiyat about divinity and of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, etc. Open up Mabzi and read. And then he says, what about akhlaqiyat? What about character? When they came to this particular topic, nobody remarked. And nobody said anything because they said Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had completed it and perfected it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's law, his dasturul amal, his akhlaq, his every department of the deen that he brought to us. Allahu Akbar. Shunidam ke mardumane raya khuda. Dile dushmanan ra na kardantang. Na ra na kardantang. You know what? I heard, Hazrat Wala is quoting these couplets and they are so beautiful. I heard that the men of the path of Allah, they do not even restrict and cause taklif and pain or inconvenience to the heart of their enemies. How would you achieve this level, oh my brother? How would you achieve this level? Wajang, when you are fighting, you are at loggerheads, you are at war with your own friends, with your own family, in your own home, with your own neighbors. Look at this ulum, look at this ulum in the Farsi language. Another of these couplets, Subha dam murgh chaman bagul nakhastai guft, naas kam kun. The, the bulbul, the nightingale addresses the rose or the flower, the beautiful flower, saying to it that uh, don't become uh, too proud and don't do this and do that. There were many flower, flowers that blocks blossomed and bloomed just like you, just like you, but eventually they weathered and they dried and their life came to an end. Their life came to an end due to which the rose, that beautiful flower, then speaks up and says, then speaks up and says that what are you talking? What are you saying? You claiming love on the one side, you come and you sit on these flowers and you do this here and you do that there, you suck the pollen, you do this and that and the other. But it's the most harsh and the most crude thing that a lover can ever say to the beloved. And Hazrat Wara remarks and comments after he says these couplets. And he says that today we also claim love. We claim love to our father, we claim love to the sheikh, to this one, to that one, to the other. And side by side, we're giving them taklif. We're saying this about them. We're doing this against them. We're doing this, that and the other. And how would we become successful? We've got dawah on one side. We're making big, big claims. How would we become kamyab? Kamyabi. Kamyabi to kam se hogi. Na ke husne kalam se hogi. Kamyabi will come with doing something. Making amal, doing something. Not just with sweet, sweet talks. Fikr ke iltizam se hogi, zikr ke ihtimam se hogi. It will come about by perpetually being in fikr, to have fikr and to be con constant and continuous in our zikr. Listen to the waqia in the incident of Sheikh Bu Ali Sina. He went to this great wali and buzruk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He went there, he sat and uh, for a while does that. Nevertheless, he finished up and he left. When he leaves, he leaves one of his people saying, you stick around and listen 
Let me know what's the impression of the Sheikh of me. He leaves, he goes. The Sheikh has nothing to say. He carries on with his work. Eventually, the person designated with that type of duty says to the Sheikh, uh, I mean, Bua Lisina was here, the Sheikh, uh, this person, this Alim. Uh, so he said, uh, what about him? He says, no, I'm just asking, uh, what do you feel about him? So he says that, uh, you know what I feel about him? Uh, I feel... Uh, my impression of him is Akhlaq Nadarad. Bas. One sentence. Straight and forward to the point. That's it. That's my impression of him. The messenger goes and he says to the Sheikh, uh, he says to Bu Sina, the Buzruk and the Wali and the Sen Saint says this about you. You do not have character. Nevertheless, in a short time, he was a man of knowledge. He compiled a whole kitab on Akhlaq. On Akhlaq. Because the sheikh made he the sheikh made a remark akhlaq nadarat he does not have akhlaq he does not have akhlaq so he compiled the whole kitab and he sends it in the presence of the sheikh and the sheikh says uh, what's this now come what's this about uh, explain to me go on so he says no Hazrat you said that the first the sheikh doesn't have uh, about the sheikh's akhlaq so listen here he compiled a whole kitab on akhlaq. He's well versed with the with that department of knowledge, etc. So then the sheikh then answers. He says that listen carefully. I'm saying it again. Man naguftam akhlaq nadanad. Man guftam ke akhlaq nadarad. Listen, I did not say he doesn't know akhlaq. He's a master in akhlaq. He's got all the knowledge of the world of akhlaq. I am saying. Man guftam ke akhlaq nadarad. I say that he's got no akhlaq in his life. He may have the knowledge, but he doesn't, he hasn't understood. He hasn't, the reality, the essence of it, the haqiqat of it has not come into him. Allahu Akbar. And that's what we say. وَنَعْنِي akhlaq مَا هُوَ أَعْمَالُ الْقُلُوبِ What we mean by akhlaq are the characteristics of the heart. Where is tawakkul? Is it concrete? Can you see it? Get hold of it? No, it's abstract. It's in your heart. Where is tawazu? It's in your heart. Sab dilme. All of them are in the heart. If any person leaves his house and then he walks past by a dog and he's still understanding himself to be better than a dog, ah, come on. How long have you been in this, in, been in this path? Come out of that as well and understand yourself to be much lower than that. And isn't that the reality? Come on, let me explain it to you. Isn't that the reality? If you pass away with Iman, you would be successful. Then you may even say something like that, that you would be better than that dog. But for now, you can't even utter that and say that because you don't know what the moral holds for you and in which way would you die. So in that sense and in that manner and in that aspect, even understand yourself to be more insignificant than that of a dog. Shunidam ke mardumane rai khuda dile dushmanan ra nakardande tang I've heard that the men of the path of Allah, they do not even inconvenience the hearts of their enemies. They do not restrict it and trouble the hearts of the enemies. How would this become easy for you? This particular station and stage. When you are still fighting, you are still at war with your own friends, your family. Look at houses. Houses are on fire. People are fighting with one another. What a lovely share is this year and couplets and it's so full of meaning. Allah Ta'ala bless us with the akhlaq of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. On one occasion, I was speaking in front of a majma and I said so much of efforts has been made on the works of Hazrat Gangohi rahimahullah ta'ala, shuruhat were written, they were translated, etc. Now, and I said to them that on that department you excelled, but how nobody to date has even done any work on the maktubat, the maktubat of uh, Hazrat 
Monana Rashid Ahmad Gangoi, Rahimahullah. There's a need for that as well. Hazrat Monana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to say, Whatever I achieved from Hazrat Tanwi, I achieved. But together with that, over and above, I made great progress due to the Maktubat e Rashidiyya and the Maktubat e Ma'asumiyya. The Maktubat of Hazrat Gangoi Rahimahullah and Hazrat Khaja Muhammad Ma'asum Rahimahullah. But what to do? Alas, who reads? Hazrat Wala is saying, who reads? Batin ki tarakki ke liye, buzurgo ki maktubat par liye. For spiritual progress, then read the maktubat of our pious predecessors. You know, we sat and we sit here every day in the morning in this majlis, Zikrullah, Ishraq Sadat, and then the Waz and the Bayan. What is this all about? It is Nisbat Ma'al Haq, all in the effort of getting connected to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And the rest and the balance of the day, then what happens? It goes with Shafqat Al Khalq, compassion towards the makhluk of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And that is what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought to us. On one occasion, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is uh, hungry. Hunger, what type of hunger? No food, days on end. Some food has been brought to him. He hardly starts eating of it and someone comes and says, uh, give me some food. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives it. The man takes it. He goes in the bazaar. He sells it. The third party looks at all of this, repurchases it. Brings it back to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Rasul of Allah hardly sits to start eating it. And the man is back and does the same thing. To, to which Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives him the food. And this goes on over and over and over again. Many times. Due to which Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him. What type of a beggar is this? Immediately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. To Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rather took him to task. And do not scold the beggar. Do not scold the beggar. Meaning, Shafqat Alal Khalq. Shafqat Alal Khalq. And then in the other surah, in the other surah, which is uh, Surah to uh, Abbas, where Allah Ta'ala says, Abbas wa tawalla an ja'ahu al-a'ma. You know, Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum, uh, radiallahu ta'ala, once came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was preaching Islam to a few leaders of the Quraysh. Now, because he was blind, he did not realize that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was occupied with others and kept insisting that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teach him something. Now, since his arrival disturbed the discussion and complying with the... Uh, the, the, the discussion and complying with his request now would interrupt what was being said to the mushrikeen leaders. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ignored him, thinking that he could speak to him at another time. On the other hand, the opportunity to address the Qurayshi leaders was rare, and if any one of them had to accept Islam, it would influence many others to follow. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa his reaction became evident on his face and he frowned because Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum kept on insisting. So he frowned. At this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals and says, Abasa wa tawalla an ja'ahul a'ma. He, the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, frowned and turned away because a blind man came to him. وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّ أَوْ يَذَّكَّرُ فَتَنْفَعَهُ الذِّكْرَ O Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how do you know that perhaps he, the blind man, will be purified by your guidance? Or he may take heed and advice will prove beneficial to him. Amma manistagana, as for him, the Qurayshi leader, who is indifferent, he doesn't care. Fa anta lahu to him you attend. 
instead of seeing to the sincere blind Muslim, وَمَا عَلَيْكَ أَلَّا يَزَّكَّى When there would be no blame on you if he is not purified. If they do not accept Islam, I mean they were not Muslims in the first place. If they were not, would not accept Islam, there would be no blame on you. وَأَمَّا مَنْ جَاءَكَ يَسْعَى وَهُوَ يَخْشَى فَأَنْتَ عَنْهُ تَلَخَى As for him, the blind man who comes running to you, in fear of Allah, he comes to you. To him you show indifference. You give just a little attention. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq and the hidayat of understanding the deen. Allah ta'ala save us from abhorrent character. The most weighty on the day of Qiyamah will be the akhlaq. The akhlaq hasana, akhlaq fadila. You know, there's a kitab of minds, akhlaq fadila. Also, that of an Arab alim. He came to know that we were going to translate it. And he also put up one person from his side, then to go over our entire translation, etc. That is a magn magnificent kitab as well, the akhlaq fadila. Let's make dua. Rabbana la tuzih qulubana ba'da id hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahhab. Rabbana la tuzih qulubana ba'da id hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahhab. Rabbana la tuzih qulubana ba'da id hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahhab. Allahumma inna nas'aluka sihhata wal ifata wal amanata wa husna al-khulq wal rida bil qadr. Allah Ta'ala bless us with all these beautiful characteristics and beautiful akhlaq. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala become happy with our little broken efforts and ibadat. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sameeu al-alim wa tub alayna innaka anta tawabur rahim bi hurmati sayyidin nabiyyil kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.